we are back again for another edition of our Cause of the Week Lunch and Learn. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Christy Kennel, an Associate Director for the Combined Federal Campaign. This week's cause is Arts and Humanity. The arts provide a glimpse into the soul of a community, help spark imagination, encourage empathy, and help young minds reach their full potential. We have a few charitable organizations joining us today to share how their work supports arts and humanities. My name is Julie Dudley and I'm an Associate Director for the Combined Federal Campaign. Our cause of the week is Arts and Humanities. I have the great pleasure in introducing Lois Boyle, Executive Director of Access Virginia. Access Virginia is a non-profit organization given the gift of sight and sound. Welcome, Lois. Hi, Julie and everyone. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a bit about your services and programs? Yes, Access Virginia provides open captions um, for the deaf and hard of hearing and uh, audio description for the blind and vision loss. And we do this at the performing arts theaters and um, other civic events so they can have access and to be able to attend. What has been the impact of your mission? Ooh, um, I feel like a little girl again, and you've brought light into my dark world, are just two of the sentiments expressed by a person with hearing loss and one with vision loss after they had been locked out of the theater for so long. So our greatest impact is quality of life. We are able to allow them to integrate into society and to participate. And how have you adjusted during COVID? During COVID, like many others, we pivoted uh, to virtual. We were able to conduct our workshops. We also um, conduct workshops for students with vision loss at the Performing Arts Theater. So they were able to um, uh, gear the workshops to a virtual setting. And also for the deaf and hard of hearing adults, we were able to conduct some workshops and also provide captions for their meetings so they can continue to um, stay connected and not be isolated. And what are your future goals? Ooh, we have many. Um, one is transportation. We'd like to purchase a vehicle because a, a barrier to them attending many uh, is lack of transportation. So uh, we'd like to expand our services. Um, we need to hire um, staff. And so that's just three of the main big ones. Because right now it's just me. <laughs> and, we're expanded. And, and I know how, how that is. Well, thank you, Lois, for joining us today and for giving us insight on the important work Access Virginia carries out. Um, can our federal workers volunteer for you? Yes, we can always use volunteers. Yes, uh, we would love to be able to have someone tra transport equipment, assemble and disassemble it, man our tables at the venues, um, pass out flyers, take surveys. Um, yes, we can always use volunteers. Well, thank you, Lois. Thank you, Julie, for um, this time and thank you to the federal employees. Uh, thank you for your support in advance. Um, we can't do it without you. So anything um, you can give would be helpful. Thank you so much. Scores is a youth development program that started back in 1994 uh, by a teacher in Washington, D.C., who saw a need for after school programming in urban areas. Cleveland serves currently Huff, Glenville, the Slavic Village neighborhood. 
the near west side known as Tremont in Ohio City and also the far west side which is West Park and Bel Air Puritas. America Scores is best known as a soccer program but it's actually a three-part tri-curricular approach of soccer creative writing and poetry, and also service learning. Um, students are engaged um, through every activity as being part of a team. They learn how to write and perform poetry on stage. They learn how to play soccer, um, and they learn how to work as a team to uh, complete service projects within their communities. Some of the issues that our students are facing, just challenges in their neighborhood, uh, we have parents that work in multiple jobs, so are not able to help their child in the evenings with homework. Um, prepare meals, so just a lot of um, some social emotional problems in, in, in regards, to, and then in addition to just some neighborhood concerns with some violence, just parents not being able to be there for their child. Ayana was extremely shy and reserved, it took a lot to get her to really speak in class and in public, and you know having her go through the program, you know she's more outgoing now, she wants to perform on stage, um, she's, she's done extremely well. I was really shy before America Scores. I didn't have any friends, but now we're like a team. We have seen a positive difference in the students that have been in the program. We have some that have been in the program in the last three years. So really just looking at their data and looking just with their, um, you know, how they interact with other students, how they're doing academically. Um, we have seen a positive difference in our scholars. Everything's been positive, I mean, to the point of, you know, can we get some additional spots? I truly feel that programs like America Scores are important because students get to feel like they're part of a team. They get to wear that soccer jersey and they get to accomplish a goal, not only on the soccer field, but also in the classroom. Every school in Cleveland should have America Scores as part of their program. America Scores Cleveland would love to partner with more schools. We actually have several on our wait list right now. Um, but ultimately it comes down to funding. With more funding, we are easily able to replicate the America Scores program in more schools. I think other schools need America Scores because it's cool and it's really fun and I think they will like it because they will meet other friends. We My name is Jose Rodriguez, and I am the Associate Director for the Central Florida Sunshine Zone. And today we're going to be talking about the Cost Week of Arts and Humanities. And with us, we have the Canines for Warriors, a great organization that is determined to end veteran suicide. Canines for Warriors is the nation's largest provider of trained service dogs to military veterans suffering from PTSD, traumatic brain injury, and our military sexual trauma. And with us, we have Lindsay Snyder, who is our development director. Lindsay? Thank you, Jose. Yes, I am Lindsay Snyder, and I am proud to be the director of development for Canines for Warriors. I'd like to share um, just a video with you of um, our mission and where we're headed in the future. Jose? At least 20 veterans take their lives every day in America, and Canines for Warriors is dedicated to ending that. Canines for Warriors is fortunate enough to have been incredibly successful, helping almost 700 of our American heroes get a service dog and rescuing over 1,300 dogs across the country. But there's still so much work to be done. We're not just given a dog, you were given a family. The majority of the dogs in our program come from high kill shelters all across the country and our innovative program allows both the dog and the warrior to heal together. My life was literally saved because of this program. The program here, it's a lifesaver. They basically give you your life back. Academic research of our program shows that 82% of our warriors have reduced suicidal ideation and 92% of our warrior graduates reduce their medications. This is literally my medicine on four legs. We ultimately say two lives. We rescue the dog and the dog rescues the warrior. And it was like that moment that I knew I was gonna be okay, that somebody genuinely cared. Canines for Warriors, it completely changed my life. The Canines for Warriors program is a rigorous six to eight month training program to take a rescue dog and turn it into a highly skilled, highly trained service dog. This guy here, I just can't even 
begin to explain how my life has changed. Our national headquarters is located on nine beautiful acres in Northeast Florida. This is our primary residential training facility. Our Gold Family Campus, located just outside of Gainesville, Florida, is on 67 beautiful acres. Due to the growing national epidemic of veteran suicide, we have an incredible amount of work to do. The only way we can help more warriors is to get more space and more dogs. Our new San Antonio campus meets that need. With our incredible partnership with Petco Love, we are able to build a brand new 5,000 square foot, 30 kennel facility where we will be rescuing dogs right from animal control services. Once completed, our canine operations center will be the world's largest rescue dog training center. We'll have capacity for over 150 dogs. There's literally nothing we won't do to help our graduates succeed in life. The need to help our disabled American veterans continues to grow. Without your support, we could not do this critical work. Thank you. So as you can see, we um, are expanding our mission and without the CFC uh, campaign and those donations, um, we couldn't move forward without you. And we're so appreciative. Just to give you an idea, um, year to date for 2021, the CFC has helped us save two warriors and two dogs. Um, that's two pairings um, just in this year, and that's it's huge, and we are so thankful. Um, if you'd like to continue to help us with our mission, the CFC code is 82286. Thank you so much for believing in Canines for Warriors. And thank you, Lisa, for participating in today's presentation. We really appreciate it. And and it's a great work that your canines organization is doing. We really, as a form of veterans, we really appreciate that. Arts and humanities are a powerful tool to help youth overcome obstacles and build critical character traits that ensure a more successful future. A big shout out to all the organizations who were able to join us for this week's Lunch and Learn. Your donation will provide opportunities for individuals to explore their identity and values through creative pursuits. Remember, you are a change maker. You can be the face of change at givecfc.org.